We're uh, actively uh, seeking again the, the position of Assemblyman in District 36. Proud to have served this far and look forward to doing it again and again. So you, your campaign goes every two years. Tell me a little bit about uh, the last legislative session and some things that you uh, signed, some bills that you're very proud of. The legislative session was uh, was a great experience for me. There's a tremendous learning curve, but I feel like I've uh, uh, learned a lot from that experience. Passed some good legislation, some uh, uh, bill that allows uh, the county commissioners to appoint people to, to boards, which were which is really onerous to, to some of the smaller counties and some of the areas that weren't able to have uh, have the positions filled by the governor in a timely manner. Uh, we've been we've been very fortunate to work on some water legislation and some lands legislation, some gun legislation, uh, obviously to keep uh, our rights from being trampled and we were very proud of that and working together with the senator we have uh, we've been very successful I believe. Some of the things that uh, you and uh, Mr. Gokachia really uh, focused on was being accessible. Uh, you're from up north and uh, James is down here and having the office here but really um, kind of teaming up to uh, represent uh, the constituents here in the state. Well, Senate District 19 is huge, uh, you know, from Oregon, Idaho to to Prim on the California border. So uh, I'm very dependent on my assemblyman, both James Oscarson and John Ellison in the north. Uh, if it wasn't for James down here keeping me posted, keeping his finger on the pulse, he calls me, emails me, says, hey, you know, we've got an issue with this. What do you think we should do with this? And uh, and sometimes says, hey, you need to get down here. We've got a real issue. So I'm very dependent on James. Uh, he has all my support. We worked through the session very closely. Uh, I think we did our town hall meetings, uh, phone conferences back into Pahrump and Elko. Uh, very well received. Again, as James said, we had some tremendous legislation. I think AB 227, which was the public lands legislation that created the task force that uh, will take a long, hard look at whether those lands should be returned to the state of Nevada. Uh, 343 was another uh, that allows for ATVs to be, if they're multi-passenger, they can be registered and insured and driven on the roads in the state. Uh, so we've got a, I, I think we had a tremendous session. I would like to say that uh, I want to thank Perump. Uh, I've represented him for 15 months now. Uh, great people down here. We've got a lot of work to do, and I, I am glad that uh, I only have to run every four years. <laughs> so what's coming up next? What do you see coming up in the next session? What's kind of uh, the scuttlebutt out there? What are people talking about? Deanna, we're talking a lot about water. I mean, it's it's on the front page of the news almost every week. We're talking about health care, all these uh, proposed things that were supposed to happen with health care certainly haven't materialized yet. So we're going to make sure that uh, that the people in uh, in uh, rural Nevada are covered. There's network adequate there's physicians and, and places and facilities to serve their needs. Um, those are the two key things, I think, and then education is always going to be a thing. Watching really closely the, the margins tax be very onerous and, and hurt, just hurt businesses left and right. So we're working with, uh, with groups uh, all around the state to make sure we try and defeat that. So a, lot, a lot of good stuff happening. People can come to you with their concerns, their questions, to talk to you about uh, possible legislation, some uh, bills that uh, might be coming up, and and you do uh, listen to them. You you have a really good uh, rapport with them, don't you? I have. I just take a lot of. I'm very pleased and take a lot of pride in the fact that we are accessible. And the senator and I have this office here in uh, uh, in the Hafen Building. We're very pleased to have it. We've got people that are staffing it a good part of the day now, and we're very. Uh, very accessible. My cell phone number is on my business cards, so uh, I can always get a hold of the senator. If it, if 24 hours goes by and we haven't returned your call, there's something wrong. We didn't get the message, so we're very proud and pleased to, to represent the people in somebody's 36. Are you issue? I think we need to touch on is SGR 15, which is the net proceeds, the ballot initiative that will be on the ballot this fall. I'm urging all rural counties: you have to vote no. If that provision comes out of the constitution, then it will change the distribution of the net proceeds and it will be the death knell for for rural Nevada I mean there is no guarantee at the point it comes out of the Constitution how that money will be uh, dispersed back to the counties and in fact we know they will apply an excise tax and that excise tax probably will end up in the urban areas and uh, so those the last 25 years that we've had net proceeds and that has really been extremely helpful to the rural counties will be gone so I'm urging everyone, everyone, to vote against SJR 15. We need to keep that provision in the Constitution. Will you guys be having more of those conference calls coming up where the people can participate? During the session, we'll have them try and have them every Friday like we have had. Uh, in addition to that, the office is available too. So 
we'll, we want everybody to know that we are accessible, that we're, we're available for your concerns, for your questions. Just come by and have a cup of coffee. We're happy to visit with you.